what's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. And on today's episode, <laughs> I, can't, I can't say it. We have to say it later. We're going to talk about distractions in class, and you will understand soon enough why I'm laughing, why Andrew's laughing, because <laughs> cause I was actually going to do this at the top, and I just can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> Hang tight. Uh, if you're new, welcome. You've picked a great one to start with. <laughs> My name is Jeremy Lesniak. I'm the founder of Whistlekick, where we do a whole bunch of stuff in support of traditional martial arts and traditional martial artists, probably people like yourself, joined by my good friend, co-host, producer for Martial Arts Radio, and off-to-travel companion, Andrew Adams. Andrew, how are you? I'm great. I'm doing well. Doing well. Good. Glad to hear it. Uh, thanks for being here. We're going to have a fun episode today, that is for sure. Now, if, if you are new, I'm going to encourage you. There are two places I want you to go. I want you to go to whistlekick.com and see everything that we do. Check out the links to Marshall Journal. Check out the books that we do. Check out the events that we host. Check out the store. It's one of the ways that we cover our bills. And if you buy something in the store from, you know, a shirt, we're, we're wearing almost the same shirt, not quite. Uh, hats, which Andrew is not wearing a whistle kick hat. I do not have one right here. But we do all kinds of great stuff. And you can use the code podcast15 to save 15%. Martial Arts Radio has its own website because there's so much going on because we do two episodes each week, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. And if you go over to that website, what are you going to find? Yeah, you'll find the episodes. You'll find audio. You'll find video. You'll find transcripts. Jeremy, why do I care about transcripts? Because you can search. Because a year later when you're going, what was that episode? That person said that thing. And you remember like three or four words, you can search it. Yep. And you can search it from the website. I actually recommend using the Google search. You, it's actually a little bit easier to do that. This will kick martial arts radio quote, the phrase you remember, end quote, and it's gonna pull it even faster. The power of Google. <laughs> we do everything that we do to connect, educate, and entertain all of you on the road to getting everyone in the world to train for six months. That is our stated mission here at Whistle Kick. It is what we want because we believe martial arts brings out the best in us. And our sponsor today also believes that martial arts brings out Wonderful, wonderful. I don't know if I'm going to go so far as to say that Jason believes the best in us. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I know he thinks very highly of martial arts because he's a martial artist himself. I've had the chance to train with him. He's a wonderfully insightful, contemplative, intelligent man who has founded the, what we're going to call it a brand, Safest Family on the Block. It's a podcast. It's also a book. The book came out of the podcast and the podcast covers things like martial arts, but it also covers a lot more. What are you going to find at Safest Family on the Block? You're going to find episodes on fire safety, uh, mental health, all car kinds safety. of things. Car safety. What, what else do I have here in my notes? Uh, emergency preparedness. Yep. It, there's incredible stuff over on that podcast. If you have a family and you want your family to be safe and you have not checked out what Jason does, I don't understand why. He's bringing it all together for you, and he's a great guy. He's been on the show, and we appreciate his support, and I hope that you, in support of us, as well as yourself and your family, will check out what he's doing, including the book, Safest Family on the Block. It's 101, 101 tips, tricks, and hacks that you will find relevant, and you can save 25% on that book using the code WHISTLEKICK20. Three, find safest family on the block, Facebook, Instagram, and we'll have links in the show notes to that stuff. Did I miss anything on that? No, I think the sponsorship cool. stuff is we're, we're getting better. I'm getting better. We're all getting better at this, but it's yeah. still kind of new. And I appreciate Jason's support on this. So, um, I'll say I was, gonna, I was going to distract you during that, but I decided not to because okay. I have respect for Jason. Because <laughs> I've also tra trained with him, great guy. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. Like, you know what? I'm not going to distract Jeremy at this point. All right, I am done with my tea, so that's going to go over there. I won't be drinking it anymore. So you won't be distracted by it anymore. I will not be distracted by my tea. Okay. So the original, like, as some of you might imagine, we have internal names for some of our episodes, and the internal name of this episode, when I emailed Andrew, I said. We need to do an episode on farts. And, <laughs> true. you know, because we needed to. But the best thing about you, Andrew, is that you're, you're willing to go pretty much wherever. Like, you want to do an episode on farts? Fine. Like, sure. Let's do an but episode on farts. But I felt I needed to explain. Now, obviously, the title of this is not farts. 
as funny as that would be. But I see farts in the context of martial arts class as a wonderful metaphor of how distractions are handled in general. Yes. And so let's talk about the specific of farts and then we're going to just keep going and we're going to, we're going to talk about the subject a little more generally, right? If you've been training more than, I don't know, a month, you've pro especially at a kid's class, you've probably had a scenario where somebody ripped one. The sound yep. alone, yep. For, forget about odor, the sound alone is immensely distracting. And depending on the culture of the class, the way it is handled is dramatically different. And and how Some you class, handle it, go ahead. and how you handle it can your class could have been going one way, and how you handle it could change the class for the whole rest of the class. Yep. If you teach kids and you find farts funny and you encourage it a little bit too much, I'm gonna be blunt, one of your kids is gonna crap their pants. It's gonna happen. So yeah. you have to be careful. But there's also kind of the other extreme of completely ignoring it every time. Not everyone can handle that. Yeah. And I see this at really formal, traditional, usually karate schools. And it ignores a reality. Somebody farted. People are laughing. To ignore it suggests a disconnect with reality among some of the newer students. And then you've got options in the middle, like, yeah, yeah, come on, guys, everybody farts, not a big deal, To All right, you have five seconds to laugh, five, four, three, two, all right, and now we're focused, right? Yep. Things kind of along that line. What, what are other ways, Andrew, that you've seen martial arts schools handle flatulence? Um, those, are the, those are the ways that typically, it's either, it's either completely ignored, it is, uh, you know, okay, guys, let's get over it. You try and rein the class mm -hmm. back in. And we're talking kids' classes. It, when it happens in an adult class, it typically doesn't change the mood of the whole class. Uh, when I've seen it happen, and when it has happened to me in an adult class, yes, I do fart. I have farted in <gasps> class before. Um, you, you mean that universal biological function has occurred for you? Yep, yep, that is, that wow. is true. No, I, I've never, no, not, not once. Nor my wife, nor my wife. Nope. But, um, you know, for the kids class, you get the whole, Oh, come on guys, let's get over it. Blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Or, or you get the, you know, the, the, the whole class Snickers and so does the instructor. And I, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to say any one of those ways of handling it is wrong, but you have to understand that each one of those responses will change the class. Right. Right. Now, we could spend the entirety of this episode just focused on this one example. But what I think makes it really relevant is that this example becomes a window into the way distractions are generally handled. Correct. Because because flatulence is not the only distraction that can happen in class. Right. Right. I grew up in an environment where the instructor's dog would wander through. Mm -hmm. uh, small children would wander through. We worked out in a, uh, it was an old high school that became the community center for the town. So we were in the gym, but the town offices were there. So sometimes people would press their faces up against the glass and they would watch. Or sometimes people would be out in the parking lot making a lot of noise. Or what's, what's another one? The lights might flicker. A bulb might go out. Mm -hmm. Right. These are all very common things, and maybe they don't all happen all the time, but when you take the entirety of distractions and you put them all in a pile, you're going to have a distraction every single class. Yeah. They might be small. They might be large. How do you handle them? Now, Andrew, you teach. You teach kids. You teach adults, mm -hmm. and you, you teach on, over Zoom. You teach drumming over Zoom, and it, it the – whole of someone's environment is available to, to distract them. You don't have control over that. You can't make them mute their phone and put their dog in the next room. Yeah. How do you yeah. handle distractions? Do you have a general philosophy? So it, it, it depends on, uh, it totally depends on what the distraction is. It yeah. really, really does. Going to uh, flatulence, I just like to say flatulence better than fart. It's a fun um, word. 
for the adult class, I will typically make a funny joke because okay. adults can handle that. And it'll be like, it'll, it'll, if I'm teaching in class and it happens, I'll be like, uh, excuse me, I'm the one teaching here. No talking. I'm teaching. You know, like it's, it's funny. Like obviously he yeah. wasn't talking. Right. Um, f- and for the kids, it depends on the situation. It depends on the kids I have in class. Um, I generally try to ignore it as a general rule. Um, actually, I'm thinking of one specific example, actually like two or three weeks ago, like pretty recent. Um, we were working and we were sitting on the floor. I was going through some techniques with the, with the kids um, and, you know, I was on my knees so that I was down at their height so they could do the arm wrist lock or whatever I was doing. I don't remember specifically. And the, the kid sitting next to me totally ripped one and it, it, you couldn't hear it. There was no, there was no sound, but it obviously happened. And I smelt it and was like, I, no joke. I almost gagged. It was really bad, but yeah. I completely 1000% ignored it. Because it didn't disrupt class other than me. Because no one else was sitting by us. He, I was going to be working with him. I was watching the other students that were working, the other partners. Um, and then, you know, I just ignored it. Went about the rest of the class. And then came back, was working with him later. And and it, I don't want people to think, well, maybe he just smells. Like, no, it wasn't. He didn't, he didn't poop his pants. Because he was fine. Everything, he smelled great. Okay, that sounds bad. I'm not going around smelling my kids. Okay, but but then like ten minutes at later, he ripped another one, and and I this time because I was sitting next to him, I heard it a little bit, so I know he was farting. And again, I just ignored it because I knew that if I let him know, and I found fa- that I you know found it fun, it would disrupt the class, and and he might feel embarrassed first off, right? And I don't want that to happen. But if he right. sees it as a funny thing, then he's going to keep doing it more, which I didn't want to yep. happen. And I think the key here is that it becomes really individualized. And this becomes one of the more, I guess, advanced elements of teaching. That there are things that, given a certain mix and a certain day, certain environment, you do that you might not do other days. If, I, if I'm working with a group of three kids that I know and I trust them really well and one of them lets one go, you know what? I might think that's funny. Or to use a, a, a non-toilet humor example, if one of them makes a joke or asks a silly question mm-hmm. or does a, is learning a form and does something really weird with their hands that I look and I find it funny, yep. I might laugh. But if I'm working with a larger class and I don't know them as well, and there's more of a mix, I'm not going to err with that because I don't necessarily know what the outcome is going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you asked me about other distractions when I'm, like, teaching drumming Mm -hmm. and stuff on Zoom. And for me, there's two kinds of distractions. There's a quick distraction of, like... Mm -hmm. A, a dog is barking or, or, you know, the mom comes in the room and walks through and is then gone. And then there's a the distraction that's going to continue to happen. And I think, you know, you have to look at those differently. Um, well, and then there's the one that like happens quickly, but could happen a lot more like a dog barking, like the dog mm-hmm. barks once. Okay. It's a quick distraction. Oh, what was that? Oh, okay. My dog. Okay. Mailman was here. Okay. It's fine. Or, the dog barks and then later barks again and barks again. It's like, okay, well, can we find maybe a different place for us to be or for you to be? Can the dog go in a different area of the house or something like that? Right. Right. Here's my framework whenever I'm teaching. And and this is universal uh, for me. First priority is to the group overall and my efforts to educate them. Notice I didn't say teach them, educate them. Right. Because I could teach without people learning. I could teach to an empty room. I can set up an environment where I'm giving wonderful information, but people are, let's say, terrified or distracted. Okay, so there's the whole and then there's the individual. In the example of you teaching over Zoom. Your efforts are to make sure that that person is able to learn. Yeah. So if a dog barks once. Not a big deal. Mm -hmm. If a dog barks continually, 
Well, now we're running the risk of, of the, in most cases, children not learning adequately. And that is your job is to help them learn. Exactly. Yep. The reason I point that out is because some people look at these distractions, especially if they are occurring from an individual and the first place they want to go is disrespect that yeah. they, they take it as disrespect. You know, how dare you fart in my class? That's disrespectful. Maybe it is. So what? Yeah. If your job is to educate them, they are the priority. Mm -hmm. Show up for them, meet them where they're at. The kids dropping bombs, you got to work with it. I mean, you, right? on one hand, you could say they pay you to do that. They pay you to be there. If mm -hmm. they fart, well, they paid you to be there and fart. Right. But because the priority is the group, where am I going to intervene? You talked about that, that child who let a few go. Well, if the kid's out in the middle and nobody's able to focus, I'm going to take that kid, you know, and I don't necessarily know exactly how I'm going to handle this because I don't know the kid that you're talking about. But I might say, hey, uh, why don't you go to the bathroom and see what's going on? Yeah. yeah. Right. Or if there's a parent there, maybe I'm going to I'm going to offload that responsibility to the parent to say, this is what's going on. And I don't want them to be embarrassed, but it has created a distraction and it needs to be addressed. Or maybe it's something as simple as they're not in the middle of the room. Maybe they're in the back of the room. Sure. And we could come up with plenty of, of other examples. Hiccups. You've probably had hiccups at some point in your life that were so pervasive that you couldn't focus on things. If I had somebody in my class that could not focus, because I would say, okay, why don't you go sit down and pay attention as best you can? And when the hiccups pass, you can come back to class. Yep. Right? As opposed to everyone around them watching them and being focused on them because, excuse me, as I burp, they have hiccups. I found that very disrespectful, Jeremy. It was. I absolutely meant it in that way. <laughs> For me, I mean, if, if we start to kind of sum this up, it's about first the group and how the actions of whatever, whatever thing is happening, whatever distraction is occurring, impacts my ability to educate the group. Mm -hmm. I'm going to yeah. choose the group over the individual because that is my job. And I am going to do my best to be kind and respectful through whatever correction or mitigation occurs. Yeah. Most distract, if, if you have a healthy martial arts environment, the distractions that we are talking about are not things you're going to prevent. Mm -hmm. You might have once in a while something weird pops up, but most of the time, the schools that I'm aware of, there are very few true distractions. And honestly, the, this is part of why some schools, and I, I think a growing number of schools, don't permit people to watch in the same room. Because yeah, it, I, it's I, an opportunity I, for distraction, know, right? And that's yeah, that's I a whole other it. subject we could get into. Yeah. But I think I think the the two the two parts of my my rubric, right? Group over the individual and respecting kindness through any correction yeah, or mitigation. And I, think, and I think it's also a smart idea to you can't go overboard with this, but looking ahead to see if there are distractions that you can help mitigate before they even start. A perfect example is if you have a school with huge windows where there is lots of traffic that goes by, I'm not going to stand with my back to that window because then all the kids get distracted by the stuff that's behind me. Right. Exactly. You know, know that stuff ahead of time. Um, and sometimes they still can be a distraction. A police car goes by with the sirens on, right? That definitely is going to distract the class. Um, mm -hmm. And so, you know, recognize that it's there, but then it's gone, you know? Well said. If anybody out there has other ideas, if you have healthy ways of handling these things that we didn't get into, if there are specific examples, specific distractions that maybe – you've had happen and you don't think you handled it well and you want to you want to throw that into the mix we would love to tackle this or maybe so don't maybe be afraid to reach out it well or maybe it was funny yeah maybe it had a funny distraction tell us that too all the above yeah 
Because farts are funny. Farts are funny. <laughs> most of the time. All right. <laughs> Can you imagine what would have happened if, if, if I had dropped that at the very top of the show? Today's episode's about farts. <laughs> We would have, we didn't go off the rails. We're still, we're, we're, no, we're hanging no. on the, I mean, that, that we're, we're taking the corner that wheels up a little bit, but we got it. Audience. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We appreciate all of you. If you want to support, I'm going to give you a couple of things. You can join the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. You can share this episode with someone that you think would appreciate hearing uh, 20 minutes about farts, or you could support Safest Family on the Block and Jason Brick's effort to make your family, everyone's family, safer via the podcast, Safest Family on the Block, as well as the book, Safest Family on the Block, which you can find on Amazon. Uh, yeah, right? It's on Amazon, isn't it? Uh, I believe it's on Amazon, but you can't use the you can't You use can't the use control. the code. That's right. So yeah. uh, save your 25% and go direct. Whistlekick kick 23. Thank you to Safest Family and to Jason for their support. Thank you to all of you for watching or listening. If you want to have me out to teach a seminar or you want to come on and take what at this time is the one open consulting slot that I have for your martial arts school, would love to hear from you. Jeremy at whistlekick.com. Andrew is Andrew at whistlekick martial arts radio.com. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, smile, and have a great day. Have a great day.